Hello, friends. David Nuno here. Tech Sags Rewind presented by T-Mobile. And they want to remind you guys to visit T-Mobile.com slash across America to learn more about how you can get value and coverage there with T-Mobile. What a show, what a show, what a show. We had uh, Billy Lucci on to talk about many things, but the latest on the offensive line coach, also all the things happening with transfers there in college football. Young Richard Zane, Clark Kent was here for Around Aggieland. Appreciate his time. Andrew Monaco, the voice of the Aggies, also stopped by. We talked a little bit of hoops. I'm right handed but I'm using my left for my shot right there and I'm bank on it OB and myself we're banking on the Aggies this weekend against Arkansas it is Texas Aggies Rewind Olin what are you banking on I'm banking on the fighting Texas Aggies Whoop. going 2-0 and in SEC basketball play I want to bank on that too I think they saw what they're capable of and then were reminded that they what they can and can't do and I think a, an Arkansas team that's been up and down. Oh, and two, I think, in SEC play, uh, right? Trying to find themselves. I, I think the a and is playing a lot of confidence. I'm looking, I'm banking on them to win tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to agree with you. That was going to be my bank, but I'm going to add to the bank. Okay, all right. Henry Coleman's going to have another monster game. When I say monster, he's going to have a double double. He, had a, he didn't have a double double last time, but he had a lot of points and he had, what, seven rebounds? Uh, I'm going to go with Henry Coleman giving the Ags a double double and helping them win their first SEC home game. I like that guy. Uh, I like that guy, too. Everything about him. Respond to these text messages. All right, John in Cyprus. Disagree. Max Johnson has experience, and he's a very good quarterback. If I was do the odds, I'd say 60% Johnson, 40% King. Okay. I think there's a I'd reason. i that. Yeah. I think there's a reason Haynes King was considered your starter that last year until he got hurt. I think if he's healthy, he's probably going to be the guy. But that's just my opinion. He adds, Ewers and Rattler are the same person, just different types of cancer, and will be fun watching them uh, take uh, Sark down. <clears throat> I don't know enough about Ewers, but I do know that Spencer Rattler, though he's been good, he's had uh, he has a really bad reputation off the field. Yes, he does. What do you got going on this weekend other than the Aggies? Well, I'm going to watch the Aggies play basketball and then probably end up at, at least at one point, my favorite breakfast place of Tap Ben's. And, yeah. Uh, uh, then just do what, watch some football on, on Sunday. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Oh, we got the Adidas game to watch, too. Yeah. Is that, that Saturday afternoon, I think? I think so. Uh, I think it is. We'll have Jason Howell talk about that. Look uh, forward to the championship game on Monday. Yeah. What do you make of all this negative attention? Uh, for as much as we say we want new teams and new blood in college football, that a lot of fans can't stand the status quo getting shaken up, mm -hmm. right? It's always got to be some other reason, right? There's got to be something. Uh, oh, they can't be doing it the right way. Oh, they can't for this. Look, the bowl game happened. And, and, the, and the circumstances around the bowl game. As I told you, we're playing by last year's rules. We're playing by 2021's rules as we go into 22. Or 2020, actually, yeah. when, it, when it comes to COVID. But it allowed the Gator Bowl to get another team in play you know, by, by doing that early. And you never want to put a student athlete in that kind of position if, if, to get hurt and you know, depleted. But once again, it's a shot at Texas A&M because, to me, I'm going to go back to what Jimbo said from the very beginning – you awake a sleeping giant. And the worst thing that happens for other schools is when that giant is awakened, now you have to deal with them every single year. And that's what's happening. But to me, it's like, oh, but, but we don't like the new players on the stage. Right. I guess there's a comfort to that. Well, you better get used to it. I, it's funny. I was talking um, last year with someone during, during that run, and they were saying, well, it's always the same teams. I said, you know what? I want you to be mad at Texas A&M because I want to be that team that is in that Final Four every single year in football. I want you all to be mad at us that that's the position I want Texas A&M to get to, and that is what is happening. Interesting, if it does continue in two or three years, it's going to be the next team that's on the rise that's that right. is going to get all that. But a and I just, what, what Jimbo was building, it, if it's a stock, I would buy it, that's for sure. All right, last one for you. DJ Jerkin, defensive coordinator, football-wise. Uh, what a fit, right? What a fit. Uh, he knows the SEC because he coached with Urban Meyer at Florida, coached with Will Muschamp there at Florida, so he has that. Jim Harbaugh at Stanford, uh, at Ole Miss. It's not just the Ole Miss for, right. for DJ Durkin. The connection to Dan Quinn, who's now in the NFL, when they were together, that little time he had with the Falcons as well. David, I say this to you. How could you not want to be the defensive coordinator at Texas A&M with the talent? I mean, that's what has to be exciting. So you're bringing someone that Jimbo had to coach against, which I find interesting. Jimbo didn't have just ACC rivals at Florida State. The other rivals were in his state at Florida, at yep. Miami. So he would play the Gators every year. So you had... Same thing as he went up against Mike Elko, right? When Mike right. Elko was at, was at Wake Forest. So that, that familiarity... 
but to me, it looks like it could be a perfect fit. How, again, how could you not want to coach this talent on defense that's already here and is coming in, and then he knows that he gets to coach the philosophy? Obviously, if, if Jimbo Fisher's bringing him in, it's got to be a really, really good fit. I think it's an exciting hire. What's going on around Aguilar? So how about this? Pat Henry is being inducted into the Texas Track and Field Coaches Association Hall of Fame uh, that tonight in Grapevine. That'll be his fifth Hall of Fame to be inducted into. This How like, many Hall of Fames have you been inducted into? Just zero. Same. So Pat Henry, of course, he's won uh, nine national championships at Texas A&M, and 62 Aggies have won individual event championships under his watch. So congratulations to the legendary Pat Henry on yet another Hall of Fame induction tonight. We will have him in studio starting our weekly hits on Tuesday. I feel like I learned so much when he's in here. I can't wait for that. That'll that'll be exciting. Maybe since you're going to start working out with me soon, we can get him to give you a, a plan as well. That would be enjoyable i would love to run uh like a brandon miller tr- excellent transition into my next point he was named a bowerman preseason watch list uh member he was the sec indoor and outdoor 800 meter uh champion last year and on the women's side tyra gittens also a bowerman tyra. watch list member of course she was a finalist for the award last year mm-hmm. which ultimately went to a thing mo basketball uh you saw that thrilling victory over georgia on tuesday night they're back home for a noon tip off against arkansas tomorrow that game will be on the SEC Network. And then the women's basketball team, they're back in action on Sunday afternoon facing Florida at Reed Arena, a 2 o'clock tip-off streaming on the SEC Network+. Plus. DJ Durkin's been hired as the defensive coordinator. Anaya Smith has announced he's returning. And then uh, you'll also be able to watch Jimbo Fisher on Monday night during the national championship for Film Room with Jimbo Fisher and the Texas A&M uh, coaching staff. That'll be on ESPN2, 7 o'clock Central, Monday night during Alabama and Georgia. All over that one. Can't wait. Yeah, uh, thank you, brother. Good of work. course. Yeah, it's good seeing you, Clark Kent, offensive line coach. Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, you had reported that you think it'd be a little bit after the DC named, mm-hmm. and we've got DJ Durkin this week. So, you think maybe by early next week, maybe a little bit after? Yeah, yeah. I think by I, if I'm looking at, it, I'm thinking there's a couple options, David, and uh, it's one of those deals where one of the and I'm not making it like it's some earth shattering shake up football kind of name. So I don't want people, everybody's guessing on that thread, but it's a situation where uh, I think this coach is trying desperately to keep it particularly quiet. It's not a bit, it's not, again, like I'm saying, this is not, it's an O line coach. Every guy they're going to hire, for example, they could go get Bill Beanball out of OU and it would be 100% lauded by the, by the fan base and people would be going crazy because of his reputation or name, but he's not really a fit at all in, in AM's style of offense and, and how they will play. So um, it's O-line coaches. It's just, everybody's going to be split and say, Oh yeah, that's really great. Or uh, whatever we'll see, or, you know, Oh, that's a bad hire, but there's not going to be, I don't think a consensus ever. You look at Josh Henson, you look at, Jim Turner, when they hired him, it's, it's never going to be like an overwhelming consensus unless it's just a guy that's been propped up and built up. Like if I'd have told you, hey, a and is going to get Notre Dame's O-line coach like three months, a month ago, I think a lot of people on Texags would go crazy. Oh, yeah, Notre Dame, they, they had a great O-line last year. Well, they just let him go at Notre Dame to hire somebody better. Um, so O-line's a weird one like that, but – I think they've they're narrowed it down to a couple guys and I'd be I'd be pretty unless unless those two guys they just finally took a look at it and said, you know what, we're actually gonna extend this out and keep looking. But I think it's set up to be wrapped up by certainly by the end of the weekend, start of next week. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great weekend. It's Texags Rewind presented by T Mobile. Want you to like it subscribe, comment, share, do all that good stuff for us and help grow that subscriber list. We'll see you guys next week.